Well, hello there. Lately, there has only been one question that people ask me, and it's, do I still have a job? Is conversation design still a thing? Will I have a job in the future? Or is that job going to change over time? We're going to talk about all of that at Conversation Design Festival, the impact of large language models on the conversational AI community and conversation design in particular. In particular. I think a way to think about it is that currently people are creating the experiences. People are creating conversational experiences and they are being supported by technology. And I think what we see now with large language models getting better and smarter, that they're going to increase productivity of the people that are actually creating the experiences. So people are still in the driver's seat. But over time, that might very well change. Over time, the large language models, the generative AI might actually be creating the experiences that people have when they reach out to a brand. But that doesn't mean that the human is out of the loop because even though the human is now drive in the driver's seat and creating the experience, when the AI starts creating the experience, people are going to be you know, supporting the AI and they're going to be doing quality assurance and making sure that it aligns with their tone of voice and benchmark it against design patterns that they want to use. So there's still a job for you out there, and I think it's going to get more and more exciting. And we've always embraced this at CDI. You know, algorithms need parents too, and you're going to be a parent of these new technologies. So what are some of the ways that you can use this stuff to already increase your productivity? Well, here are a few things that, that we've been doing at CDI uh, just to play around with it and, and have some fun, but you could ask chat GPT to write a happy path for a certain scenario or you know maybe you'd ask it you know what could a conversation about this topic be like you know write you know simulate a conversation or maybe I have a persona a tone of voice and I'm just not entirely sure or I want to make it come to life I could ask the system to write a biography write a one-page biography or what are some of the hobbies this person might have? Or how might they say something? All right, so I can create a backstory for a persona and use that to create more depth and, and get inspired by it. Um, something that comes up a lot, and it comes with a warning as well. You can use this to create training phrases. You can say, you know, what are 20 different ways that people can order pizza? And you'll get 20 phrases that you could use to train an intent. But is this really how your audience speaks? That's the first question. Um, and more importantly, this system, ChatGPT, has no idea about the rest of your corpus. So if it gives you these phrases, you can't just throw them in there because they might be competing with other intents that are in your corpus. Right? So don't just blindly throw that stuff in there. Be very careful when you do that. The same goes for entities, right? If I have entities, I can use this to create variations and synonyms for those different entities. Makes it easier for me to extract that when people talk. Um, and variations, also kind of neat, right? If I have people that reach out to my AI assistant more frequently, whether it's a chatbot or a voice application, I don't want to greet them the same way every day. So if I have a, you know, a welcoming phrase, I can ask the system to create some variations on that. Or you know, when at the end of a conversation, when we say goodbye, maybe we want some variations there. So we can use large language models to create some variety and, and you know, use some of that stuff in our design work. And of course, when you're really bored or you know, you're staring at the blank page and you don't know what to do, you're not sure how to uh, answer a certain question or, or write a prompt, you can ask it to write you a prompt. And a lot of times that prompt makes no sense. But you know, if you try five to 10 times, you're gonna get something that you can work with, that you can then rewrite, polish, make sure it follows all the design patterns that you care for, um, and then kind of do it that way. So definitely lots of ways that you can large, use large language models already uh, to increase your productivity as a conversation designer. But be, be careful, like don't just jump in the water and, and commit fully, right? 
see where, where you know see what's possible start studying it start embracing it and then when the time comes to to really put this stuff in production you'll be ready so conversation design festival we're going to talk about this alan from raza is going to be talking about it brett kinsella is going to be talking about generative ai is some of our workshops we have people focusing on this and zooming in on it so i hope to see you there and it's going to be a great event and i'll see you in the next videos